to fix a gaping neckline? Yes, Cosmo hates gaping necklines. Fixing sewing mistakes. Oh yeah, hi, I'm Cassidy and this is my YouTube channel. All so right. we all encounter issues as we make things. Um, if you've sewn anything, I know you can relate. Common things are gaping necklines, you know, weird looking invisible zippers, uh, darts with bubbles, I could go on and on, pants fit issues, everything. So what I wanna do with this little series is show you guys what kind of issues I am tackling in my own sewing and show you how I solve them. This specific video is about how to fix a gaping neckline on a little sweater top. So the binding, so it is ribbing. Uh, so like what you would find on the cuff of a sweatshirt. Now, even though you may not be using ribbing for your neckline, maybe you're doing, you're doing a binding out of the fabric that the actual shirt itself is made out of. So the self fabric, this still applies. The only thing that's gonna be different is if your material is less stretchy than the binding I have, you're gonna make the binding longer. So this tutorial is applicable not only to fixing gaping necklines, but it's just gonna show you how to make your own binding from scratch. This can be applied to any type of knit neckline that you do so. This is what I have to offer you in terms of valuable content and knowledge that I have that I can share with you. I very much hope that you guys enjoy this video. And if you have any requests, but I would love I to hear the challenges that you guys are facing in your sewing. So drop a comment below if you'd like to share and I would love to help you guys out. Let's do it. This is a sweater that I made that I really like, but the neckline is gaping. So the reason that the neckline is gaping is because I actually made the binding too long. I discussed this in my March 2021 sewing vlog. So how do we fix this? <laughs> That's a great question and I'm gonna answer it. So first, I'm just gonna cut this thing off. As evenly as I possibly can. I'm gonna make a little snip here. And we'll just make that our center front. That's about center front. Okay, so we have removed the binding that's too long. So what I'm gonna do now is, you can go about this a couple different ways. So I'm gonna grab the binding. This is just ribbing. Um, and let's make a binding. So first I'm just gonna kind of measure the opening here, which is about 23 inches. Depending on the stretch of your fabric, you're gonna wanna make it around 90% of 23 in my case. But since this is so stretchy, we're actually gonna make it less than 23. There we go. There's our strip. Yep, I think that's gonna be much better. Okay, so as I said, we can sew this in the round or in the flat. I wanted to really quickly explain in the round versus in the flat. So when you sew something in the round, you have your neckline rounded. So typically you have your side seams as well as your shoulder seams sewn already. So you can sew a neckline in the flat. You're gonna obviously need to sh sew the shoulder seams, that's a tongue twister, before you apply the binding. So if the side seams are not yet sewn, the bodice would be in the flat. So likewise with a binding, if you take the two raw edges and sew or serge them together to make a circle and then apply it to your circular neckline, that would be applying the binding 100% in the round. So what we're gonna be doing with this particular case is we're doing half and half. So the bodice is in the round. It is completely finished and it's the circle. We have the side seams as well as the shoulder seams sewn. The binding on the other hand, we're actually going to put on in the flat. So this is a method typically used for creating a custom binding. Um, I'm not really one who likes to use pattern pieces for that. 
So in this case, we're going to be applying the binding to the bodice, which is in the round, but the binding itself is in the flat because we have not circled it. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave me a comment. I would be happy to make a video about this. So as we go along this neckline, because this is binding, or it's, it's like a ribbed cuff. So it's very, very, very stretchy. We're gonna stretch it quite a bit because we really want that neckline to come in and not to gape out. Now I'm going to find where my center front mark is, which is right there. Now you can kind of see just how much we really do need to stretch it, but do not stretch the neckline of the shirt. <laughs> So before I pin any more, I'm actually just going to take the two ends and do them like that so that they are together. And then I'm going to repin that down in the center back. We'll worry about that in a minute. So now I need, I know where my shoulder seam needs to go on the binding. Not gonna lie, half the time I just end up taking out the pins at my sewing machine and like going for it. But <clears throat> for the purposes of demonstration, ladies and gentlemen, So now we are ready to take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch that is 1.5 millimeters by 1.5 millimeters. Uh, probably 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna get this even. So we'll do that with the zigzag stitch. And that will be the functional stitch to hold this in place. And then after that, we'll go back and stitch in the ditch with a an edge stitch foot and then that will secure our binding into the inside of the garment and we will have fixed this problem hey y'all i'm back i did not film this well my hand was covering it in the whole video so the way that you do the ends of the binding before you actually start sewing it on is you're gonna have it pinned around your neckline and I had told you guys at the beginning to sort of fold these over like this. But what you're going to do before you start sewing the binding to the actual neckline is you're going to unfold those two little folds that we made. And you're going to match up the raw edges like this. Pop a pin in. And sew along there then you will press that open like that and start stitching your neckline so that you're catching those ends when you start stitching at the center back okay so i'm starting at the center back i uh dropped my needle i'm gonna do a quick back stitch I mean, and you can see just how much I am stretching this. <clears throat> and just aligning it with the edge of my presser foot so that I sew in a straight line. Just making sure everything is like flat, is flattened out. I need to go a little slower because my machine does not like me whenever I go fast like that on zigzag stitches, but. Okay, so we're coming to the shoulder seam right here. I'm just gonna pick up my presser foot and making sure that it is, the seam allowance is going towards the back of the garment. And just to reiterate, I am not stretching the neckline at all. I'm just stretching the binding. Mm -hmm. 
And then you kind of want to stretch it even a little bit more as you get towards the center front so that we don't have any of that gape going on where it's so visible. Make sure that I don't get that clip in there that I made. We'll go back and check that in a minute. As you can see, I'm not going super fast. I could, but my sewing machine wouldn't like me. So, yeah. All right, so you can see I have like this much binding before I get to the back. So I know exactly how much to stretch it in order to make it fit the opening. See that? So I need to stretch this much over this. But you can see my hand is only on the top on the binding, it's it's pulling the binding like this towards me. I'm not stretching the neckline. Sorry, I know I'm saying that so much, but if you do stretch the neckline, it defeats the whole purpose of this entire tutorial. You're gonna have a gaping neckline if you stretch the bodice as you sew. Use the stain right here. It comes I'm, out in the wash. All right, so I'm pressing the binding. So just not towards the bodice, towards the, I don't know, the freaking atmosphere, the air. Another thing you can do is take a tailor's ham and actually iron it on the tailor's ham because the tailor's ham is shaped like, well, it's really yeah. just shaped like a curved body part. I, I don't know. Okay, so once you've done that, we're gonna wanna cut away some of this excess bulk. So I'm gonna iron the sweater material away from the binding so that I can come in here and trim it. Ironing that seam allowance away from the binding. And I've got two pairs of scissors that are hopefully sharp enough for the job. Now this is called grading a seam allowance. Why would, all right, there you have it. Cut off the bulk. Now I'm gonna turn it right sides out again, and then we'll just take that tailor's ham and we're gonna fold it just down on itself like this. To complete this step, simply take your iron and fold over the binding so that it is very thin on the outside of the garment. You wanna have the majority of the binding inside of the garment and just have a little bit peeking out of the neckline so it's not too wide. The wider that you make the binding, the more likely that it's going to gape. So if we fold it over and iron it as much as we can inside the garment, that is going to contribute to our neckline not gaping. I'm going to switch my sewing machine to a straight stitch with an edge stitch foot, and we are going to stitch in the ditch. So switching to my edge stitch foot, little guide right there, and we're gonna start at the one of the shoulder seams. You may wanna move your needle over to the right or the left. 
when we are doing this final edge stitch or top stitch, whatever you'd like to call it, just make sure that you are taking your time and ensuring that the needle is going right in that ditch. Periodically checking that everything is under the presser foot, nothing's getting away from you. We're coming back around to where we started. Oh wait, no we're not. We're not even close. Never mind. She'll be coming round the neckline when she comes. She'll be coming round the neckline when she comes. She'll be coming round the neckline. She'll be coming round the neckline. She'll be coming round the neckline when she comes. Did you guys like my song? Okay, I'm going over the center back, so I'm going to pick up my foot and again make sure you're getting it all notice how i keep lifting and lowering my presser foot and adjusting as i go this is so i'm ensuring that i'm getting that perfect edge or top stitch so make adjustments as you need we'll try it on and see if we have any gaping all right you guys here it is the neckline as you can see there's no gate not on the back or anything so just by cutting off that neckline and literally starting fresh, we were able to fix this sewing problem. Ding! Very satisfied. All right, y'all guys, that is it for this edition of Fixing Sewing Mistakes. I have two other ideas coming at you guys. They're filmed, ready. And if you liked it, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that YouTube stuff. But regardless, if you don't, thank you so much for watching my video. And I hope that everything you do in your sewing and in your life is successful. So with love from me to you.